Please be seated. Welcome to the class day ceremony celebrating the accomplishments of the General Studies class of 2011. Yeah. I'm especially pleased that President Lee Bollinger, Provost Claude Steele, Executive Vice President Nicholas Dirks, and members of the faculty and administration are here to share in our celebration. I would also like to welcome our class day speaker, Professor Roger Leeds, class of 1966. Finally, it's my privilege to welcome our reunion classes and the reunion committee, chaired this year by Professor Leeds, who is celebrating his 45th anniversary as a GS alumnus. The cre creation of GS over 60 years ago represents a milestone in the evolution of undergraduate education at elite colleges and universities. What makes GS unique is that it actively recruits students who have taken an untraditional path to a traditional, rigorous Ivy League education. The marriage of two undergraduate colleges, Columbia College and GS, one for traditional students, the other for non-traditional students, makes the undergraduate classroom at Columbia different from that of any other Ivy League classroom. We value not only diversity of economic background, ethnic background, race and gender, but also diversity of age and experience. We know for a fact that this unique marriage contributes significantly to the quality of the intellectual discourse in the classroom. The success of GS and of this innovative model of undergraduate education is due in large part to the commitment of the faculty to the ideal that an Ivy League education should be available to talented women and men at any point in their lives. It is in fact because of this commitment the ha that we have been able to recruit to Columbia the largest number of veterans at any Ivy League university. <laughs> 22 of whom are celebrating their graduation with us today. Whether... <laughs> Whether GS students are dancers, entrepreneurs, or firefighters, Wall Street bankers or technology specialists, whether they are in the challenging joint program with List College of the Jewish Theological Seminary, working parents or professional models, whether they are international students or new Americans, they receive their superb Columbia education together with all other Columbia undergraduates. We're also proud to announce that we have recruited our first class of North American students for the new dual BA program between Columbia GS and the Institut d'études politiques in Paris, known more commonly as Sciences Po, the premier French university focusing on the study of social science at seven campuses around France. Our commitment to educational innovation is not limited to the full integration into the undergraduate program of students with untraditional backgrounds, but also includes the creation of innovative undergraduate programs that are in tune with the president's commitment to make Columbia the leading global university in the country, if not the world. Members of the class of 2011, you represent the cutting edge 
of undergraduate education. And you have proven yourselves through your academic accomplishments. We are privileged to count you as members of the Columbia intellectual communities and the alumni communities. Yeah. For yourself. Oh. Since he assumed the presidency of Columbia in 2002, Lee Bollinger has articulated a dynamic vision for the future of this great university and mobilized the human and financial resources required to transform that vision into reality. In the past nine years, President Bollinger has skillfully guided to completion the approval, approval process for Columbia's ambitious expansion into Manhattanville in West Harlem, where the first stages of construction have already begun. He continues to enhance scientific research embodied in the new science building and the new, soon to be constructed Center for Neuroscience. President Bollinger has also moved Columbia into the forefront of international universities with the establishment of Columbia centers in key cities around the world. His goal is to transform all levels of the university, its students, curriculum and long-term vision to embrace the values of global engagement. President Bollinger is also a committed educator, continuing to teach an undergraduate course on the First Amendment even while he leads this great university. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the 19th president of Columbia University Lee C. Bollinger. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, the, the weather is unbelievable. Um, I just hope you can hear us uh, from up here. I want to say a special uh, welcome and thanks to the parents and families and friends of the graduates. I sat where I think everyone on the stage uh, has sat where you are now and we all know uh, just how deeply emotional uh, this moment and day is and we uh, we extend our great, great welcome to you. Uh, you'll have a chance uh, to hear me, um, not at great length, but at some length on Wednesday, and so I just want to say a couple of things to you today. First is, uh, I would like to give you the opportunity to thank uh, Dean Peter on because he is an extraordinary... Uh, Dean Ahn has uh, done so much uh, to build general studies to what it is today. And it's not only the intelligence that he brings to it, it's his character, it's his person, it's his love uh, of you and uh, of, of general studies. So thank you very much, Peter. Just two things. One is uh, the institution loves you. And it loves you because you represent what is best about the university. You represent what we feel uh, about knowledge, about curiosity, about struggling to make sure that you improve yourself in life by learning more. So every time we have you in our classes, every time we think about general studies, that little word, non-traditional, which is such an odd word to apply to a, a group of students, but it, it, 
means a lot to us because what it means is people who have not just done what so many of us have done, which is sort of march on in life and go to school and graduate and receive another degree. You have followed different paths in life. You have decided, in some cases, against very high obstacles to return to school and to continue an education, to learn more, to build your knowledge, build a better life. That's what we value so much here. And more than anyone else at this institution, you represent that. And the second point is, I, I just can't imagine a more exciting time. Yeah, that's. And the second thing is, I just can't imagine a more exciting time in life to go out into the world as it is. It, every day, as you read the paper, as you travel, as you take courses, as you think about things, you have to feel that the world is being remade in ways that are fresh and new with very significant problems ahead, but such enormous potential. And for those of us who have come from one life of the 1950s, 60s through the 90s and seen the Cold War end and, and um, civil rights build uh, really an incredible society here, issues that dominated our attention, of course, continue to do so. But it is a really new world that you will be living the rest of your adult lives in. And it just couldn't give us more confidence to have you be the people who will see this through. So both because you represent so much that we value here and because it's an exciting time for you and for us as we build this new global society especially. On behalf of all of us, we say to you, congratulations, class of 2011. Roger Leeds earned his PhD from Johns Hopkins University, where currently he is Professor of International Finance at the Paul H. Nitze School of Advanced and International Studies. He is Director of the Center for International Business and Public Policy. He also teaches at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and currently at the Columbia Business School. Previously, he taught at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Professor Leeds's international career began over 40 years ago, soon after his graduation from GS, when he served in the Peace Corps in Brazil. Since then, he has worked in over 80 countries throughout Latin America, Asia, Eastern Europe, the former Soviet Union, and Africa. Prior to joining the faculty of Johns Hopkins, Dr. Leeds was manage, managing director and co-head of emerging markets practices at Patrickoff and Company, a New York venture capital firm and merchant bank. Previously, he was a partner at KPMG, where he headed their global privatization advisory services. He began his investment banking career here in New York at Solomon Brothers. In the public sector, Roger spent more than 10 years as a senior officer at the World Bank, working on debt and equity financing of private sector projects throughout the developing world. Over the past dozen years, Roger Leeds has dedicated himself to teaching and research on international finance markets, private equity, and venture capital investing in emerging markets and financial sector development. His publications are far too numerous to list for you this morning. More important for us today is the fact that throughout his world travels an immensely distinguished career. Roger has never lost his passion for GS and its mission. 
He is celebrating the 45th anniversary of his graduation, and he is graciously serving as chair of this year's reunion committee. Despite being a finance and development person, Roger is really a lot of fun. <laughs> Feisty, funny, and a truly fabulous human being. Let us welcome our distinguished Class Day speaker, Professor Roger Lee. Thank you, Dean On, and distinguished faculty, President Bollinger, and of course, all of you and, uh, and, your, and your parents and friends. It's a great honor to be here. And I want to also, as they have before me, offer my special congratulations to each of you. I remember, although it's been a long, long time sitting where you're sitting and uh, feeling how you're feeling, believe it or not, I can still remember. And so I congratulate you and all your family and friends that uh, you have re good reason to be very, very proud um, as you sit here today. And so I, I join everybody else in saying that. I also want to say that in addition to being ex feeling extremely honored to have been asked to speak today at a school which holds a very, very special place in my heart, um, I was particularly honored because I, too, like as President Bollinger just said, uh, have an extraordinary amount of admiration for your dean, uh, Peter Ahn, who I think has done an extraordinary job here over his tenure, and all of us who are here today and have been through the generations part of uh, the general studies family owe him an enormous debt of gratitude because I think he's been an extraordinary gene. Having uh, said that about Peter, who I consider a friend and uh, I respect enormously, I must confess that when he um, uh, extended his invitation to speak on this very special occasion, uh, we almost got off on the wrong foot. Uh, when I asked him, uh, was there anything particular uh, that he'd like me to t speak about today um, on this special occasion, he uh, suggested that I focus on my own uh, professional journey that I embarked on after leaving where you're sitting today some, uh, some 45 years ago. Uh, and I didn't say it to him at the time, but um, I did feel that this might not be the most appropriate uh, t uh, topic today. Uh, even though I was a student here, I felt that you would not be particularly captivated by autobiography, especially my own, uh, on such a special occasion. Uh, and uh, that this would not really captivate your attention as, as much as pro possibly something, some other subject. But to remain uh, in the Dean's good graces, I will speak a little bit about my own journey uh, 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 that took place after I left here and what happened to me professionally, and Peter's already told you a little bit about that. But first, let me begin by sharing a story of more recent vintage, a story that is less um, about me uh, but quintessentially representative uh, of this extraordinary, uh, unique institution called the Columbia University School of General Studies, to those in the know, uh, GS. A few months ago, on a bitter cold evening, I had the privilege of chairing, as Peter suggested, a, a meeting of about a dozen or so alumni uh, representing various graduate classes dating back more than 60 years to the 1950s. Uh, and the purpose of the meeting isn't particularly important, but the profiles of the individuals who sat around that table on that cold evening um, I think is worth mentioning. Uh, all we had in common was that we had graduated from GS. And since we did not know each other, I asked each participant to briefly recount how they had arrived here at GS and reflect a bit on the significance of their education at GS uh, long ago. At first glance, as I listened to these stories, each of the GS alumni were not very different than most of those undergraduates who are receiving Columbia degrees today. As you would expect, 
They were very, very bright, just like you. They were highly motivated to succeed, I presume, like most of you. And they were admirably diverse in terms of race and culture, nationality, gender, and more. It also is apparent, as you might expect, that each had traveled a different professional path since their graduation from GS, into the arts, business, medicine, some went to non-governmental organizations, there were even a few academics around the table. And all had achieved some level of success in their chosen profession. As I listened to these extraordinarily diverse personal stories, however, I struck more by the common denominators that bound us together than the differences, unknowingly, each in their turn magnified with their real, why there really is no other academic institution quite like GS. Without exception, each personal story that evening began with an outpouring of genuine appreciation to general studies for offering them a second chance. Although most were reticent, understandably, about why this was necessary, that they needed this second chance, I surmise that for most, those pre-GS years were not marked by necessarily extraordinary academic achievement that is the standard prerequisite for admission to most, to all Ivy League schools. It was crystal clear that everyone at that table was extraordinarily grateful, however, to be granted the opportunity to study here. I was really struck by this genuine outpouring of appreciation. I also was struck that each storyteller revealed an element of disbelief at being admitted to GS, almost as if they were undeserving. And something approaching reverence for the opportunity provided by the school, something I don't really see very often in the other schools where I've been associated with. I should add that I most definitely share this feeling of appreciation. Equally significant as the stories unfolded was the unanimity about the meaning of the GS opportunity, without exception all express the view that their experience here at this school represented the critical turning point that literally changed their lives, invariably for the better, I might add. It was this immense gratitude that motivated each of them to venture out after a long work day on that February evening. And many are here, and many are here today, I believe. Uh, and they brought with them a simple message I want to give back. Although decades have gone by since my days at GS, I cannot and I will not forget where I came from or the institution that gave me the opportunity, deserve it or not, to make something of myself. That was the message of that evening from everybody. And ladies and gentlemen, that to me is the GS story. And although my own professional journey was as different as everyone else who attended that gathering was exactly the same in one dimension that has trans transpired in the last 40 years or so, and it began right here on this campus. My GS education was the essential catalyst for just about everything that followed in my life. Based on my own academic performance before arriving uh, at GS, it's fair to say that I gave new meaning to the term late, blo late bloomer. Pre-GS, the bulk of my energy and attention was devoted to achieving success on the athletic field and, shall we say, in teenage social circles. <laughs> we can skip the details of this early history. You'll be grateful that I do. But I will reveal that my mom passed her entire lifetime in a state of disbelief that somehow I had managed to gain admission to Columbia here. <laughs> although, although she never met the misguided admission officer who opened the GS gates to her son, there's no doubt in my mind that had the opportunity arisen, she would have genuflected before him with the same reverence that God-fearing Catholics give to the Pope. She was constantly amazed. I'm going to have to talk very, very loud to compete with this uh, outpouring. Peter, did you order this? No, huh?
And so I arrived at GS unprepared, underconfident, but very determined that this was my second chance, and I too was determined to take full advantage. I don't know what this says about your future, but I think it, I think I hope it's a good sign. One one thing you learn is you how to deal with adversity. And that's what you learn. One of, I don't know if it's in your classroom, but certainly you learn that here. So in my early 20s, for the very first time, I began to study here at GS with a seriousness of purpose, and through my GS professors, became attracted to a range of subjects that eventually became my life's work. As Peter said, after all, it was the 60s. The Cold War was at its height. The campus was a beehive of raucous debate, both in the classroom and out. Looking back now, it seems only natural that given the ferment of the era, I would gravitate here at GS to courses in government, international relations, and basic economics. And most importantly, it was here at GS that the seeds of inquiry were first planted and that started, and what started as an intellectual curiosity quickly became a career path. And that was, as Peter said, in the field of international development. In these classrooms that you attend, that where you attended class, for example, I started to ask the same questions that preoccupy me even today. Why do some countries develop uh, while others remain stubbornly mired in poverty? What are the linkages between political and economic development? Are some political systems more likely to foster economic development than others? Think of China, for example. Where does the essential dimension of culture fit into the puzzle about why some countries and regions develop more quickly than others? Does foreign aid really make a difference in the pace and direction of a country's development? I first started asking these questions way back then. And by the time I graduated, although just beginning to, to grapple with these issues, I finally had a sense of purpose thanks to what I began to study here at GS. And although the career path details were still blurred in my own mind, I knew that working in developing countries would be a part of my future. When I reflect on this critical decision, and it says a lot, as much about the times as the individual, after all, back then I was emblematic of the generation that was captivated, captivated by JFK's familiar, eloquent, and compelling call to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. For me and for so many others, it resonated almost like a command. And so I obeyed. And as Peter said in his very gracious introduction, a few weeks after graduating from GS, I was sworn in as a Peace Corps volunteer and left family and friends for more than two years for rural Brazil and the beginning of my so-called uh, career. This too was a life-changing experience, but I still think that it, even today, that it was validated first and started here by what I learned um, at GS. Upon my return from Brazil, as Peter explained, I did get a doctorate, at, uh, uh, and then I started on what was a very zigzag career took me back and forth through the public and the private sector with stops along the way uh, in academia. Uh, but it was a very uh, zigzag career as I went. The common thread uh, throughout this professional journey, however, has been my interest in developing countries. And more specifically, I became interested in the intersect between public policy and the private sector's role as a, co as a catalyst or an inhibitor of economic growth and development. To put it slightly differently, almost everything I've done professionally, public sector, private sector, academically, has confirmed my belief that the debilitating scourge of global poverty can only be mitigated by when the private sector plays a constructive role as a driver of economic growth and development. And this, in turn, as I have witnessed repeatedly, uh, only happens when government designs and impl implements good public policy. And that has been basically what I have focused on throughout my long career. Thank you.
Dean Ahn, Dean Ahn will uh, forgive me, I hope, if I skip over the details of this professional odyssey. Uh, from the poorest of the poor to countries uh, that are on the cusp of joining the first world, the most advanced countries of the world. Uh, but suffice to say that I've had the very good fortune, I feel blessed, uh, to have dealt with a broad range of extraordinarily complex and interesting development issues, and I've had also the privilege to collaborate with an unforgettable cast of practitioners from both the public and the private sector uh, throughout this long career. And I really do feel that I have learned as much from them um, as from the other experiences that I've had. And that has also been a great, great privilege of mine. And then about 10 years ago, the profession, my professional journey took, as Peter suggested, a very sharp turn when my phone rang now, unexpectedly, and I was offered an opportunity to join the faculty of the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. I like to char characterize this job uh, uh, offer as my chance to become poor and happy. <laughs> and I'm pleased to report that I have achieved both objectives <laughs> with not a moment's regret. In a way, this final professional chapter brought me full circle to where it all began back here at Columbia and GS when briefly, I suppose, I was an academic of sorts, just like you. Thinking about today in this process of circling back to where it all began has reminded me of the Reverend William Sloan Coffin, the iconic chaplain who presided for many years right up the street from here at Riverside Church. I hope some of you at least recognize that name, because in my era, everybody knew William Sloan Coffin. He was revered by many of my generation. We who were the rabble-rousing children of the 60s hell-bent on changing the world. Shortly before his death a few years ago, he wrote a thin but extraordinary book called Letters to a Young Doubter, which was an imaginary exchange of correspondence between him in his old age, and a college student who was asking questions about life during a period of great uncertainty. Perhaps, I don't know for sure, some of you may identify with that. Maybe he resembles some of you. Like Coffin's imaginary student, it's just possible that today you too are coping with a modicum of tension. On the one hand, there is well-deserved pride and joy that comes with graduation. But on the other, perhaps there's just some troubling uncertainty or doubts about your future. If you fall within this category, Coffin's book provides some very useful insight. Don't be anxious about your doubts, he counsels. Doubts move you forward, not backward. Just don't seek or expect certainty, absolute certainty. Coffin goes on to suggest that the most important question all of us have to address one that is extraordinarily difficult to answer, but essential to ask, is who tells you who you are? And if you think about the question, the answer is quite obvious. It's not your parents, with all due respect. It's not your favorite teacher, with all due respect. It's not your best friend or your spouse. Who tells you are, who you are is you. It may take a lifetime to gain some clarity, if not certainty, on this extraordinarily complex question, but in my view, it is imperative that each one of you take on this introspective quest of self-discovery, or in Coffin's words, know thyself. For me, and I think many other GS alumni who attended that February meeting a few months ago, the quest began right here, right here at GS. It was here that our minds began to open, that we began to ask questions that raised as many doubts as answers. And it was GS that gave us license to begin our own journey of self-discovery. I can only hope that each of you, years from now, will reflect on your GS experience and appreciate that for you, too, it started right here. And if you do, no matter how successful you become, and each of you will determine success in your own way. Don't forget, please don't forget, that like me and so many others before you, 
whether it was your first chance, your second chance, or maybe even your third chance, it started right here at General Studies. Congratulations and thank you very, very much. And it stopped raining for us. Thank you so much, Professor Leeds. Elias Shackelford began his career as a concert pianist at a very young age, when his aunt, a Columbia alumna, gave him a month of piano lessons as a gift. At 18, he began a full-time performance career. Since then, he has given more than 2,500 concerts, including over 20 performances at the White House. Elliot transferred to GS from Georgia Perimeter College and brought with him not just a passion for learning, but also a Southern charm and gentility that is refreshing for us hardened New Yorkers. <laughs> At Columbia, Elliot has been fully immersed in the intellectual life of the university and the community life of the campus. He's been a regular tour guide, served on the student council, actively participated in the International Relations Forum and Political Science Students Association. He's also served with me and other faculty colleagues on the Committee on Instruction, the faculty committee that governs the entire undergraduate curriculum at Columbia. Elliot Shackelford graduates summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, a member of the GS Honor Society with honors in political science. Next year, he will be attending law school. I am privileged pre to present to you the salutatorian of the class of 2011, D. Elliot Shackelford. Thank you, Dean Ahn. President Bollinger, Provost Steele, Executive Vice President Dirks, Dean Ahn, faculty, families, friends, classmates, and a special welcome to our class day speaker, Professor Roger Leeds. I have never been more honored to step onto a stage than I am today with my fellow graduates of the class of 2011. This is the day that we've all been working toward for a very long time. Today is a celebration of that effort and recognition of the years of work and anticipation. It's also an acknowledgement of the support of faculty, administration, and those close to us who are with us today. The people who have been unreservedly invested in our accomplishment who supported us academically and personally, and without whom it would have been a far more difficult, if not impossible, challenge to overcome. We've been called the dancer, the journalist, the supermodel, the mom, the business exec, the soldier, and so many other fascinating identities. At times in the past, these distinctions have created a lack of common experience between us and everyone else around us. We have been known as so many different things, and yet we have shared a common goal during our time on this campus, the degree that we receive today. And so today, and for the rest of our lives, we also share the identity of being Columbia graduates, and that will never change. Our time as students in the School of General Studies has 
provided an incredible exchange of perspectives as we've learned from each other, an adventure providing uniquely thought-provoking and sometimes rather interesting experiences. I still remember talking with a professor after a class in which we had discussed the fall of the Berlin Wall when we both suddenly realized that we had watched that event live on television before many people in the class had even been born. There's nothing like taking a course about security strategies with a military veteran who has been on the ground and seen the situation firsthand. And there's nothing like studying social justice with a community organizer and a financial analyst. But our education hasn't come just from being surrounded by interesting or brilliant or diverse people. It's the camaraderie within a shared vision. It's about people who have known and done so many different things who come together and say, there are so many things that I still don't know. The reason that we're all here the reason that we're all in the same graduating class is that at some point, together or separately, we've said, I want to know more at this particular place, at this particular time, in this particular way. People often ask how a pianist becomes a political scientist. But this kind of transition is really the norm at GS. Among the many amazing people that I've met are Rob Cowdy, who left the business world because he had always wanted to study film, and Stephen Tobias, who graduated last year with a degree in English after having built a successful brokerage firm. And he also happened to be at GS at the same time as his daughter. <laughs> General studies students have learned throughout life, through experience, and searching for every opportunity to gain new knowledge. This is why we came to GS, to be in an atmosphere where this discovery is the central focus. We are here today because we wanted to have the ideas, to explore the opportunities, to try new things, and at times to fall short, and then go on to succeed all within a class period, or a semester, or the entirety of our time at Columbia. Like Dr. Leeds, I think many of us were initially uncertain about whether general studies really should have accepted us for admission. But eventually, my disbelief at being here, being at Columbia University, actually ended up being a reassurance I still remember standing at the window of Kent Hall after my Chinese literature class in my first semester, completely overwhelmed by how much there was to learn, how much there was to write, and above all, how incredibly much there always was to read. <laughs> then when I looked out over campus, I remember thinking to myself, this is Columbia. I'm at Columbia and there's no way I could have ever expected to be here. Ever since I first walked through the Amsterdam Gate, and the reason it was the Amsterdam Gate is because I got lost in Harlem on the way to campus. <laughs> the two train, you know. Ever since I walked through that gate, I've been conscious of the tradition of excellence in education at the highest level that pervades this very special place. The inscription at the top of Low Library has never failed to give me chills because although this is our day, our celebration, it is also a celebration of something that is ongoing. When we walk across this stage in a few minutes, we will become part of a tra tradition that, as the inscription says, has been maintained and cherished from generation to generation. Our being here today is the culmination of the investment of the people who came before us, and a little investment of our own too. But our time 
and accomplishment at Columbia and the things that we choose to do after it is likewise an investment in those who will become part of this tradition in the future. In a way, the legacy of our time at Columbia is in what it has changed and will continue to change about who we already were. I had done a lot of traveling before coming to GS. As a concert pianist, it goes with the territory. But exploring the world in the classrooms of Hamilton Hall or in the stacks of Butler Library truly expanded my perspective through the ideas of professors, conversations with TAs, the opinions of my classmates, and innumerable books and articles, I was given a gift. I was allowed to stop being an intellectual tourist. The world has always been accessible, and between us, we've seen most of it. But even familiar places are now intellectually available to us in a way that they have never been before. I've always been partial to T.S. Eliot, for obvious reasons. And he captured this idea when he wrote, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know the place for the first time. The things that we still want to know are out there waiting to be known, and we have now developed a constantly evolving consciousness that will allow us to explore and to better understand a world with countless facets. When I first started playing the piano, when I was five years old, I remember having to sit on a stack of telephone books in order to reach the keys, straining to see the notes on the sheet music with my legs dangling above the floor. I remember how excited I was when I was at last able to sit on the bench with my feet flat on the floor. At times over the past few years, I felt like I was carrying those telephone books around with me as I dragged my bag from class to class. But now, now none of us needs the telephone books. And it's time to just look out over the top of the piano toward the audience and just play for them and also for ourselves. I believe it's conventional at commencements to talk about going out and changing the world, that there is an obligation that must be fulfilled. The exciting thing to me, though, is that this challenge can also be an opportunity. We don't have to think about changing the world. Just by graduating, we already have. We were on a certain path, we had a certain story, and not only did we change it, but we learned that we can, and therefore, we can again. And people who are like us and unlike us can make that same change for themselves. Our Columbia education has given us a foundation for whatever we do to change things from now on. The opportunity is not automatic. The things that we can accomplish will not just happen, but the deliberate action it takes to get there is now more familiar. It is what stimulated the decision to come to GS and what gave us the ability to get up every day to stay in the library an extra hour to write those extra few pages. Many of us here know what failure feels like, what fear and doubt smell like, what uncertainty and disappointment taste like. And yet, not a single one of us knows about giving up, which is why we're here today. And all of you know what success looks like because it looked back at you from the mirror this morning. And you can see it sitting on either side of you right now. <laughs> and
and this is how it should be. Many of you have been in class with me, or right next to me, writing a paper at 3 a.m. in a lounge, or freaking out about the paper you should have been writing at 3 a.m. in the lounge. <laughs> Maybe we weren't as well-rested, as clean-shaven, or as well-dressed as we are today, but that, that is what success looked like, too. No matter the individual struggles we faced, or the different lives that we lived, one of the things that binds together our experiences is that we did it. We went to class more often than not. We turned in our assignments, and we finished our semesters. It really is an unbelievable accomplishment, and also an act of faith, since we believed in ourselves, our ideas, and the sometimes all-consuming process that is a Columbia education, we believed enough to say that it is worth it as an investment in our minds, in our futures, and in ourselves. I still remember my first connection with GS students through an online community called Storybook on the school's website. It was filled with all sorts of advice that made me wonder if I was really ready for this experience. Because as I read through it, I kept thinking to myself, well, I hadn't thought of this. Why didn't I consider that? But what enchanted me was that this was my very first experience interacting with the aspect of GS that had originally attracted me, the completely different stories that we all were bringing into this place. C.S. Lewis wrote that friendship is born at that moment when one person says to another, what? You too? I thought I was the only one. Which I think perfectly applies to our school. Together, we have continued our distinct narratives here at General Studies and Columbia, substantially changing them for the to-be-continued, the next chapter, the next volume in the series that lies ahead. Today, I'm graduating with some of you who I met on the Storybook website before we arrived, and many others who came both before and after. We are coming to an end of this chapter in all of its comedy and drama, and the exciting thing is, so much more of the story still lies in the future. And so, once again, I applaud you, my fellow graduates. I wish you the very best in your future stories. And I want to say again that it is my privilege to be a part of this outstanding class, the class of 2011. Thank you. Each year, the alumni key is bestowed on a senior who has achieved distinction both academically and through service to the school and the undergraduate community. We're fortunate to have two wonderful recipients of the Alumni Key Award this year. Professor Roger Leeds, our distinguished alumnus and class day speaker, will present the award. Henry Wells was born and raised in the United Kingdom, where he attended boarding school from the age of 10. At 13, he was accepted to Eton College. From an early age, Henry was fascinated by other peoples and cultures and vowed to turn that fascination into real life experience. After graduating from prep school, he taught English in Peru to indigenous peoples in the Amazon. Henry participated in Christian outreach programs in Germany and spent time in Jerusalem learning Hebrew and studying Judaism. 
Henry applied to GS to be able to immerse himself in American culture and education, which he did with gusto. He served on the Student Council, council as international student representative and senior class president. He led the effort on the senior gift, which this year had a record high participation of almost 50%. That is pretty good. <laughs> Henry also volunteered at Community Impact, Columbia's social and educational outreach organization. He will graduate from the Department of Middle East, South Asian, and African Studies in October with Latin Honors, Phi Beta Kappa, and as a member of the GS Honor Society. Congratulations, Henry. Congratulations, Henry. Best of luck to you. Don't forget the award. Oh, Henry, I gave you the wrong one. <laughs> Let me take it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> Our second alumni key recipient is now familiar to you, our salutatorian, Elliot Shackelford. <laughs> Elliot has served in a number of capacities on the student council, worked as a mentor of new GS students, volunteered at Columbia Community Outreach, New York Cares, Jumpstart New York, Artists Reaching Out, Love Kitchen, among others. Welcome again, our second alumni key recipient, Elliot Shackelford. The award, the award. Oh, the award. Thank you. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> My name is Leslie Lamardo, and I am the Acting Dean of Students at the School of General Studies. <laughs> President Bollinger, Provost Steele, Executive Vice President Dirks, Dean On, Professor Leeds, distinguished faculty, dedicated alumni, and assembled guests. It is my pleasure to present to you our candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in the School of General Studies, class of 2011. Each, each degree candidate will receive a certificate of achievement from President Bollinger with a special moment captured on film by our photographers. It's important. Special moments. Dr. Roger Leeds, class of 66, will present each graduate with a GS alumni pin. Seniors, wear this pin with pride and let it serve as a reminder of your academic achievement and the time you spent at GS. To the wonderful, supportive, and vocal family and friends that have gathered today, I humbly ask that you please hold your applause until all the graduates have been presented on stage. We would not want to have one family's excitement drown out the presentation of another proud family's graduate. I promise you there will be plenty of opportunities for applause and celebration when the presentation of the class of 2011 is complete. Thank you so much for your understanding and restraint. <laughs> With a few exceptions here and there, this year's class will be presented in alphabetical order, approximately. <laughs> will the class 
Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science please step forward? Sierra Bree Bayless, Bachelor of Arts, Women's Studies, Departmental Honors, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Henry Weston, uh, Henry Charles Weston Wells, Bachelor of Arts with a double major in Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies, Political Science, Phi Beta Kappa. Christina Wells, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with a special concentration in Human Rights. Marquita Denise Akron, Bachelor of Arts, African American Studies, Cum Laude. Chris Lee Aydin, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences, Cum Laude. Delphia Pohl, Bachelor of Arts, Economics with a special concentration in Sustainable Development. Stephen Christopher Adams, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Koku Akpotu, Bachelor of Arts, Major in Mathematics and Statistics. Karabo Mahato Seiso, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Jeffrey Scott Anderson, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Elliot Shackelford, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Kira Alicia Bosch, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Momin Ali, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Mathematics. Olga Minifard, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior, Cum Laude. Yusuf Ben Otham, I said, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies with Departmental Honors. Alpha Osman Ba, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science with a concentration in Political Science. Preston George Zivko Baliga, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Cum Laude. Stephen August Barton, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science, with a special concentration in Sustainable Development. Dylan Michael Bartlett, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Christopher Carl Randall Bellagio, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies. Rachel Ann Berkowitz, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, with a concentration in Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Eddie Berzak, Bachelor of Arts, Film Studies. Benjamin Adam Burnett, Bachelor of Arts, Biochemistry, Cum Laude. Aaron Cardo, Carlo Bloomfield, Bachelor of Arts, English. Peter William Bardner III, Bachelor of Arts, with a double major in American Studies and Political Science. Cassia Burke, Bachelor of Arts, French and Franco study, Francophone Studies, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Michael William Burton, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Ryan Joseph Burwell, Bachelor of Arts, Theater Arts. Evan Carter, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Tejinder Singh Shahal, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Clark Shaheen, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Sabrina Lee Buckwalter, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Jacob Bernard Aaron, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian, and African Studies. Sherman Myang Cheng, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics, Cum Laude. Marcus Chin, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Stephanie Lee Chu, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, with a concentration in Political Science. Maya Papayang Funaki, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Simeon Lee Cohen, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Cum Laude. Aaron Jacob Cole, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies, Magna Cum Laude. William, Michael William Cole, Bachelor of Arts, History. Jennifer Marie Tiesel Conrad, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology. Leah Sarah Curtis, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, with Departmental Honors, Cum Laude. Frank Andrew Carrera, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies. Ralph Thomas Izzo, Bachelor of Arts, English. Stephen Kevin D'Alessio, Bachelor of Arts, History. Claire Leopold de Shepard, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Science and Sustainable Development, Cum Laude. 
Lauren Louise Giovanni, Bachelor of Arts, History. Michael A.P. Hayes, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Joseph Andrew Duax, Bachelor of Arts, History. Andrew David Edwards, Bachelor of Arts, History, with Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Samuel George Elkert, Bachelor of Arts with a double major in Creative Writing and Philosophy, Magna Cum Laude. Shana Faye Bush, Bachelor of Arts, Biophysics. Ariana Fargo, Bachelor of Arts, English, Magna Cum Laude. Benjamin David Fielbelman, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, with a concentration in History, Cum Laude. Martha E. Fitzgerald, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Summa Cum Laude. Arez Marduki, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics, Summa Cum Laude. Kevin Lawrence Flora, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Political Science. Claire Marie Collette Ford, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Nicholas Joseph Godek, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Ashley Nicole Grecker Stoner, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Phi Beta Kappa. Elena Gredyakina, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science. Karen Moore Green, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Daniel Matthew Epstein, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Departmental Honors, Magna Cum Laude. Justin Trevor Patrick Humphreys, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Joseph Francis Gagan, Bachelor of Arts, English. Leah Francesca Gerber, Bachelor of Arts, Classical Studies. Max Joseph Gross, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics, with a concentration in Russian Languages and Cultures, Magna Cum Laude. Nicole Miles Grinder, Bachelor of Arts in English, Departmental Honors, with a concentration in Art History, Magna Cum Laude. Anna Fielding Griggs, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lee Elad Carlin, Bachelor of Arts with a double major in Economics, Mathematics, and Psychology. Yoav Orion, Bachelor of Arts, East Asian Studies, Cum Laude. Tamara Eppelbaum, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Mioyi Gu, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, and Statistics. Jason David Gustafson, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Lior Moshi Hackel, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Jimmy Hang, Bachelor of Arts, Film Studies with a concentration in American Studies, Cum Laude. Spencer James Hattimer, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies. Jack David Hinzelbrand, Bachelor of Arts, English. Andrea Lynn Hinojosa, Bachelor of Arts, History or Concentration in Archaeology. Brian Michael Holler, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Hai Ren Hung, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Cum Laude. Mitchell Reagan Hulse, Bachelor of Arts, History. Andrew Charles Green, Bachelor of Arts, Art History, Summa Cum Laude. Barry Nicole Siegel, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, with a special concentration in Sustainable Development. Bethany Denise Ritz, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Magna Cum Laude, special concentration in Sustainable Development. Samantha Marie Jackson, Bachelor of Arts, African Studies. Jonathan Arthur Yeager, Bachelor of Arts, English, Cum Laude. Eric Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Lashana Rasha Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, East Asian Studies. Mickey Boyd Kaufman, Bachelor of Arts, History, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. David O'Shea Keithley, Bachelor of Arts, Financial Economics. Lakshmi Gopal, Bachelor of Arts, Visual Arts, Departmental Honors, Magna Cum Laude. Corinne Smith-Kent, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies. 
Michael Stone Kester, Bachelor of Arts, Computer Science, Cum Laude. Dayana Miriam Hatib, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Joshua Johnson Kirkpatrick, Bachelor of Arts, History. Halal Zamir Kongigsberg, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Cum Laude. Cresta Suzanne Kruger, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew Aswood Kryzak, Bachelor of Arts, History. James Francisco Kusher, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Flora Rose Whitman, Bachelor of Arts, Film Studies. Paul Kwan, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Lior Hemi, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics. Samantha Britt Labrie, Bachelor of Arts, Architecture, Magna Cum Laude. Erin Marie LeMay, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Rachel Dorothy, Dorothea Leal, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Magna Cum Laude. Jason Wayne Lemieux, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Sarah Jane Lockwood, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Andrea Melissa Luan, Bachelor of Arts, Art History, Cum Laude. Alexandra Reif Lukens, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing. Ariel Leah Fight, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies. Jonathan Lev Grossman Boder, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Jamie Julian Martin, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Fidel Malena, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Camille Santa Iglesia Mascarinas, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Christina Barbara Matheson Barron, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Biology. John Harold McClelland II, Bachelor of Arts, History. Todd Ian McCoy, Bachelor of Arts, History. Corinne Roseanne Muka, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Jonathan Mukai, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Cum Laude. Michelle Mulas, Bachelor of Arts, Italian Cultural Studies. Rose Ellen Nurges, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Kristen Allison Hutzler, Bachelor of Science, Neuroscience and Behavior. And Andrea Robin Gerson, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Eric Walter Nyadna, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Mark Philip Nix, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology. Katrin Nussold, Bachelor of Arts, English, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Orla O'Donohue, Bachelor of Arts, Art History and Sociology. Brian Richard O'Hagan, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Nathan Page, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Ryan K. Young Parch, Park, Bac Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Lucas Glasser Huffman, Bachelor of Arts, Film Studies with Departmental Honors, Cum Laude. Susan Sung Park, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Jennifer Lee Parker, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Lisa Elena Parsons, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Cum Laude. Deseario Perez, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Kiara Reed, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Political Science. Aurelia Rabo Hernandez, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Julia Diane Rubin, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Departmental Honors with a concentration in Sociology, Summa Cum Laude. Lucas David Richards, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Barr Reese, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Cum Laude. Barbara Roby, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Marie Kathleen Yagudka, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Cum Laude. Benjamin Lee Netter, Bachelor of Arts, American Studies. Rothstein Gonclaves Roca, Bachelor of Arts, Neuroscience and Behavior. James Herbert Romberger, Bachelor of Arts, Visual Arts, Magna Cum Laude. 
Brendan Keith Rooney, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Armin Richard Rosen, Bachelor of Arts English, Magna Cum Laude. Mark David Rosenthal, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Rodney Brooks Russell, Bachelor of Arts, Religion. Sarah Devora Session, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology. Amital Rebecca Isaac, Bachelor of Arts, French. Yotam Stranger, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Javier Sabadera, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Tayoshi Sato, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Brian D. Sadovich, Bachelor of Arts, Regional Studies, with Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Rafael Antonio Saldana, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Theodore Edward Mundinger Shemeki, Bachelor of Arts, History. Pil Wang Su, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Ronak Shavesi, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics. Amir Ahmad Shakurian, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Jacob Wayne Shiflet, Bachelor of Arts, History with a Special Concentration in Human Rights. Alex, Alex Jacob Katz, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Cum Laude. Shana T. Sahayek, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Hisuk Shin, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Heather Lynn Shorey, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology. Sophia Siu, Bachelor of Arts, Economics with a Special Concentration in Sustainable Development. Julia Ann Murphy, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. Zena Attar, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Sarah Elizabeth Edry, Bachelor of Science, Neuroscience and Behavior. Misty May, Misty May Dawn Embry, Bachelor of Science, Neuroscience and Behavior, Magna Cum Laude. Catherine Joy Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Neuroscience and Behavior. David D. Marie Soleil, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with a Special Concentration in Human Rights. Maria Marcia McAllister Sherpo, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Departmental Honors, Cum Laude. Francis Petrie, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Joseph Ephraim Spitz, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Rebecca Taylor, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Magna Cum Laude. Pamela Jean Stenberg, Bachelor of Arts, English. Kevin Lee Stendhal, Bachelor of Arts, History. Lauren Morrissey, Mor Morrissey Sturgis, Bachelor of Arts, Art History. Christina Marie Sweet, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology with Departmental Honors, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Shelley Jean Sabo, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Michael Alexander Landis, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Shana Erin Flink, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Cum Laude. Samantha Jill Schaffer, Bachelor of Arts, Art History, Cum Laude. Amy Schultz, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Magna Cum Laude. Rachel Anna Spencer, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Magna Cum Laude. Christiane Tima, Bachelor of Arts, German Literature and Cultural History, Departmental Honors with a Concentration in Psychology, Magna Cum Laude. Benjamin Todoshek, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Kenzo Shushima, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Shai Moshi Sokolo Silverman, Bachelor of Arts, History, Magna Cum Laude. Samuel Ephraim Kerbel, Bachelor of Arts, English, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Farida Umarova, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Political Science, Cum Laude. 
Paulina A. Vasconez, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with a concentration in psychology. William John Velenes, Bachelor of Arts, English. Eric Matthew Vencilio, Bachelor of Arts, Biological Sciences. Matthew Lee Wall, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. William David Wang, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Operations Research. Yumi Waranuki, Bachelor of Arts, Religion. Geraldine Ashley Wee, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Cum Laude. Adam Weiler, Bachelor of Arts, Classical Studies. Bettina Weiner, Bachelor of Arts English, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Rory Max Minnis, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian, and African Studies, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Barebo Williams, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Natalia Bianca Wilson, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. Esther Wolf, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics. Gabrielle Steven Yaponsic, Bachelor of Science, Evolutionary Biology of the Human Species, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lori Williams Sanford, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Joseph Andrew Jensic, Bachelor of Arts with a double major in Creative Writing in English, Magna Cum Laude. Melissa Ray Youngern, Bachelor of Science, Chemistry. Sarah Tamsin Zift, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Nathan Meyer Miller, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science, Cum Laude. Mina Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Economics and Statistics. Margaret Una Chartans Tautier, Bachelor of Science, Information Science. Olaf Sigmund Mati, Bachelor of Science, Economics. Holly Marie Delisle, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Long Gwyn, Bachelor of Science, Neuroscience and Behavior. Jonathan David Nidev, Bachelor of Arts, Religion. Kay Young Lee, Bachelor of Science, Applied Mathematics. Monica Koristanova, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Ariel Deacher, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Christiana Holwick Warwick, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Anupam Mohanty, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Kenza Pirsada, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern and South Asian and African Studies with a concentration in pre-medical sciences. James Thomas Cannon, Bachelor of Arts with a double major in philosophy and psychology. Michael Vincent Tran, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology, Cum Laude. Edward Wing Nigro, Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy. Andrea Chiani, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Hugo Rios Garcia, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science with a special concentration in human rights. Igor Torres de Nascimento, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Nemanja Mladenovic, Bachelor of Arts with a double major in Philosophy and Political Science, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Fabian Donald Fortmuller, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies, Magna Cum Laude. Andrew Benjamin Lee Lane, Jr., Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Deborah Jan Moore, Bachelor of Arts, Film Studies, Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Christine Nicole McCone, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Magna Cum Laude. Jove Meyer, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Jesse Ray Hollister, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Jovan Mihailo Stojanovic, Bachelor of Arts, Hispanic Studies with a concentration in Linguistics, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Tiara Nicole Winter Shore, Bachelor of Arts, Creative Writing, Cum Laude. Sung Wee Hung, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics. Joshua, Joshua Leorn 
Aaron Anderson, Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Robert Nieviandemski, Bachelor of Arts, Ph Philosophy, Cum Laude. Michael Sean Kaplau Hennessy II, Bachelor of Arts, Eats Asian Studies. Gabriel Nachman Seed, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Samuel Jacob Yamshan, Bachelor of Arts, History, Concentration in Pre-Medical Sciences, Cum Laude. Seth Ryan Samuels, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies, with a Departmental Honors, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Jacob Slavin Levenfeld, Bachelor of Arts, History, Cum Laude. Adi Siegel, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Studies, Cum Laude. Alexandra Proscurina, Bachelor of Arts, English, Cum Laude. Krista Sofanowski, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Lorna Althea Woodham, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology. <laughs> Daryl Irene Lee, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology with a concentration in Comparative Ethnic Studies. Wendy Gail Dickinson, Bachelor of Arts, English with a concentration in Anthropology, Magna Cum Laude. Ina Bolak, Bachelor of Arts, English. Sophia Eleanor Niemert, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science. Damien A. DeGrazia, Bachelor of Arts, Sociology. Alberto Ricardo Vedia, Bachelor of Arts, Economics. Jason Bay, Bachelor of Arts, Economics, Mathematics. Angus Timpson, Bachelor of Arts, Visual Arts. Justin Ross Turetsky, Bachelor of Arts, Political Science, Cum Laude. Jonah Hadar Robbins Lieben, Bachelor of Arts, Middle Eastern, South Asian, African Studies. Jody Alexander Zellman, Bachelor of Arts, Anthropology, Magna Cum Laude. Phew. <laughs> Will the class Will the class Will the class of 2011 please rise Thank you, please be seated. Before coming to Columbia, Kira Bosch had a successful career as a classical ballet dancer. She'd been trained at the School of American Ballet, Ballet Academy East, and the London Studio Center. While at GS, Kira majored in psychology and was admitted to the prestigious psychology department honors program. In fact, two of the three graduating seniors in the psychology honors program this year are GS students. And GS students will be among the honors psychology graduates next year as well. Kira was a much-loved teaching assistant in the introductory psychology course before working with young children. Uh, before and during her time at GS, Kira dedicated herself to working with young children. She also served as a research assistant at the Barnard Toddler Center. Kira embodies in so many wonderful ways the long and immensely distinguished tradition of student dancers at GS. She is creative, disciplined, and passionate about her intellectual pursuits, no matter how difficult or demanding. Kira Bosch graduates with a, with a better than A average, honors in psychology, 
summa cum laude, phi beta kappa, and as a member of the GS Honor Society. Next year, she will be pursuing a degree in psychology, a PhD, specializing in child psychology. Please join me in welcoming to the podium the valedictorian of the class of 2011, Kira Bosch. President Bollinger, Provost Steele, Executive Vice President Dirks, Dean Ahn, faculty, family, and friends. I am honored to be addressing you today. I am enormously proud to be a member of the group sitting in front of me right now. As a group of General Studies graduates, we are known for the ways in which we are distinct from traditional undergraduates and from one another. We began our studies here at various times and at different moments in our lives. Some of us have children. Others of us are just transitioning out of seeing ourselves as children. However, our diversity does not hinder us from being a coherent group. Today, I will share with you my story in the service of celebrating both our differences and what we share. Today's graduating class has members from all parts of the country and the world, from France, Israel, and Switzerland, from Atlanta, California, and Michigan. I, on the other hand, grew up 18 blocks away. <laughs> My journey could have been relatively short. Yet, like many of my fellow graduates, the distances I found myself traveling in order to be here today were not just physical distances. Traversing those 18 blocks involved a five-year-long detour to England and Germany and a career as a ballet dancer. When I arrived at GS, my life had been divided for as long as I could remember. On the one hand, I attended PS 87 and IS 44 and took my studies very seriously. On the other hand, since the age of eight, I spent almost every afternoon training to be a professional ballet dancer. There was not much overlap between my two worlds. Very few children at my ballet school went to public schools like mine. And the only other public school student I knew who studied ballet as seriously as I did was my sister. So I became used to belonging and also used to not belonging within two separate universes. At the age of 14, I was told I had to choose. The ballet world demands unfaltering dedication, and it was made clear to me that choosing to continue my education at Stuyvesant High School was equivalent to never being a professional ballet dancer. But what a decision means to an adult and what it means to a 14-year-old are not the same thing. When I chose high school over ballet school, I was not thinking about closing my options for the future, but about who I wanted to be hanging out with at that moment. After graduating from Stuyvesant, I moved to London to prove to myself that I could reach my goal of being a professional ballet dancer, and I did, eventually joining the State Ballet of Berlin as a member of the Corps de Ballet. However, I didn't reach the goal that I was less aware of, the goal of feeling like an insider in the ballet community. It was not until I arrived at GS that I was able to simultaneously embrace the aspects of me that came from both of my worlds. After all, everyone at GS 
defines themselves in multiple ways. We are students and parents, students and workers, students and religious scholars, students and soldiers, students and artists. This is not merely a tolerated fact. It is a treasured one. College is a time of exploration, expansion, and learning. But for many of us, this type of growth became possible only because GS allowed us to feel and to know that here we are accepted as who we are and valued for all of who we are. In the year before enrolling at GS, I volunteered as a teacher of two-year-olds with special needs. A new interest began to take shape, and even though I had never worked with children before, it felt more natural to me than anything I had done. With this new passion rapidly developing, going to college suddenly began to feel right. I became a full-time preschool teacher at the same time that I began my studies at GS. Needless to say, when my developmental psychology professor asked for examples of just about anything, I was very prepared. I began to believe that I might want to be a child psychologist, but at first, I lacked confidence in my ability to perform the more academic aspects of that career. Psychological research was an unknown to me, and I imagined that I would dislike it, finding it one step removed from real human experience. In order to test that theory, I tried to get as much research experience as possible. Never have I been so excited to prove myself so wrong. The way in which I became familiar with research was deeply tied to human experience because research was the passion and the life's work of my professors here at Columbia. If the studies I read did not immediately jump off the page in a meaningful way, I had only to walk to the front of the room or go to office hours in order to speak directly to the authors. In my meetings with Tori Higgins, my research mentor, and an extremely influential social psychologist, the topics we covered in meetings ranged from the methodology for my thesis to ballet, traveling, and marriage. My research experiences here convinced me that it was within my reach to perform both the clinical and the scientific elements of a career as a psychologist, and they prepared me well for the next step toward that goal. When I crossed this campus for the first time, I remember thinking that it could never be mine. It was too grand, too beautiful, and intended for students six years younger than I was. I told myself that I would borrow the campus just for a short time while I got my education and then give it back, unassuming, to the traditional students. The confidence that I slowly gained at GS did not come from me. It came from you, my fellow graduates. As I met more and more GS students, I couldn't help but be proud to be one of them. Every student I met had an inspiring life story and one told with confidence and self-awareness. I reveled in the fact that GS students accepted the complexity of themselves and of others. As I spent more time with my classmates, I became aware of other commonalities among us. Despite our incredibly varied reasons for delaying our education, each of us has had to overcome something, sometimes ourselves, to begin our college educations. Whether our challenges were internal or external, they were the battles each one of us has had to fight, and we did, and we overcame. Perhaps this history is what gives us another one of our shared qualities, perspective. The challenges we face at Columbia are not insignificant, and students at GS are well prepared 
to place those challenges within a broader perspective. There were times when it was only with difficulty that I was able to do this. In these moments, I inevitably evoked my experiences dancing the shades scene in the ballet La Bayadere. This famous scene features the corps de ballet women. They appear on the stage one by one at the top of a tall platform and proceed to create a long line of identical forms as they dance very slowly down the ramp and onto the stage. Let me tell you what this entails for the dancers. While in the wings, we climb up a rickety metal ladder, one after the other, blinded by the white tutu of the girl on top of us. Arriving at the top of the ramp, we step onto the stage and proceed to balance on one leg on the extremely narrow sole of a point shoe while bending forward on a downhill. Because of this experience, every time I had a big exam or a big speech at Columbia and I felt my nerves tightening into something like dread, I would ask myself one simple question. Okay, Kira, where would you rather be? Here or in the wings, preparing for Bayadere? And I would newly appreciate the fact that exams are taken sitting down. <laughs> that sneakers are infinitely more comfortable than point shoes. And that college does not involve white tutus. <laughs> I believe that the most important thing that we share as general studies students is the fact that we never take a college education for granted. We know that studying here at Columbia is an opportunity and one for which we never forget to be grateful. Taking advantage of this opportunity is not something that we could have done alone. I think it is fair to assume that all of us are eternally grateful for the family members and the friends who believed in us and supported us in whatever ways they could. They have shared our joy at the high points, helped us through the hardest moments, and they have allowed us to define quality time as you sit close to me while I study and ignore you. <laughs> as general studies students, our shared view of education as a golden opportunity brings us together in concrete ways. I met some of my closest friends at GS in a statistics class. We became friends not because we shared similar backgrounds or interests, but because we shared Cheez-Its. On Thursday nights at 8 p.m., when all of our classmates and our TA had abandoned the stats lab, there we all were, a small group of GS students helping each other to apply formulas, use newfangled stats software, and yes, sharing vending machine snacks. Today, as the GS class of 2011, we take our first step away from GS, 311 steps in 311 different directions. We take with us an ability to honor the things that make us unique and an ability to be equally proud of our strengths and our struggles. Our paths were not simple or direct. Our plans were not always carried out exactly as we imagined. We can appreciate that there is no timeline and no blueprint for achievement. I have no doubt that going forward, we will continue to define and create our own opportunities and to achieve in our own ways. As we move away from this phase of our lives, we will not stop learning. We are a group of people 
who know how to learn in many ways. And I urge us to continue our educations formally or informally. I know that wonderful things await us, but I know something else that is almost more important. I know that when the difficult times strike, as they always do, we will be the ones who know how to turn difficulty into an opportunity, to turn a failed plan into a better plan. Today, our graduation is not the fulfillment of a plan. It is the fulfillment of a dream. Class of 2011, congratulations. Congratulations to the graduates, your families, loved ones, and friends. You embody in a unique and compelling way the mission and vision of GS and Columbia. I hope you will stay involved with your Columbia family for many years to come. I invite you all to continue the celebration at the class day reception to be held under the far tent directly to your right and my left. I ask our guests to remain seated while the president's party and the candidates file out. Will the candidates please stand?